How's it going, Song of Ice and Fire fans? It's Grant from You Catch Me. Hold on, let me know. Let me re record that because it's not strictly about a Song of Ice and Fire today. Um, we're actually going to be talking. Let's start again. How's it going, hobby fans? So, we've got a very special episode today. I'm joined by my good friend OJ Tibble, recent best painted army at the London Grand Tournament. How's it going, OJ? Yeah, really well, buddy. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's Friday, so uh, got the weekend to look forward to now. Yeah, and I'll get to talk to you for the next hour or so about lovely painted models, because although I am a gamer at heart, my, my, my true spirit lives with uh, the hobby aspect of the game, so it's really cool to... I'm excited, I'm excited. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, you've done you've done tutorials before from a hobby perspective, haven't you, but not, not spoken to anyone and discussed it, so to speak. So yeah, it's really cool. It's great to be here. Oh, I love stuff, good stuff. So, best paint at LGT, how was that? Oh, it's absolutely awesome <laughs> absolutely awesome uh previous years absolutely blown away by uh tim whitney and 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 the other guys painting absolutely exceptional so to take it home uh this year was uh really awesome really special yeah so do you want to talk to us a little bit about a song of ice and fire like how long you've been playing if it's you only ever played free folk you're dabbling with other factions What's the story? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess like most of us, I've been uh, gaming since secondary school, so about 30 odd years now. Um, dipped into Song of Ice and Fire after um, Warhammer Fantasy died a death, and uh, I tried to dabble into um, Age of Sigmar unsuccessfully. My buddy, um, Rob, uh, who've known each other for years, went hard into Song of Ice and Fire teased me in with um, Starks and Lannisters and uh, got me hooked and um, Free Folk came along and I wanted something that was kind of uh, my army, uh, so to speak, uh, that he didn't already have at that point. Uh, I mean, he's got everything now, the git, uh, but um, wanted something that was mine. Free Folk came along. Um, I've always been a bit of a fan of the underdog um a uh, bit of a fan of the Horde, uh, so yeah, jumped in on them and uh, I've been loving them ever since really. So I've been um, Song of Ice and Fire for about three and a half, four years, I think, give or take. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, because obviously we've known each other a little while now and what was really nice to see is last year at the LGT, obviously went together as part of the Chelmsford Bunker, but yeah. um, you, you, you took a, you took an army that wasn't the off-the-shelf man's list, but I was really... <laughs> Sort of, sort of happy to see it's free folk doing well, but a different different style of free folk. So I'll tip my hat to you there, mate. You've done well. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually placed a lot better that year than, uh, well, than I did this year and, <laughs> and that I expected, to be honest. But um, I mean, for me, um, I, I guess I'm slightly um, the, the opposite to yourself in, in that um, the hobby is. is uh, really the dominant part for me and, and then the gaming comes second to a degree I mean don't get me wrong I'd love to win but uh, the reality is I don't <laughs> often as as uh, as we found out the other night hey. um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah so that that year was kind of what I had painted but at the same time I, I kind of like I said I'm a fan of the underdog so taking the manse list um, for me was never really an option because that's that's just not my style and doing something different i kind of figured and hoped that people wouldn't be wouldn't be expecting what i was maybe bringing um even if it wasn't top tier necessarily it might throw a few people off their game and uh, allow me to to jump up a little bit which which it seemed to do which was cool um didn't work out so well this year <laughs> <laughs> right well it's been five minutes into this conversation, man. I think we should just look at some of your uh, awesome painted stuff. So, I'm going to go through pictures. this. Yeah, let's look at some pictures, mate. It's a video. So, we obviously spent uh, some time together the other night and we got some really cool footage of your army. I'm really happy where it came out. So, it'll be really nice to sort of talk mm. through some of these details on these. So, um, we're not going to. So, this is basically everything you've taken to the LGT this year. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything um, that I've taken. To be honest, there's not much else on the shelf um song of ice and fire that is uh painted to be honest so this is this is most of my painted song collection oh cool right so we're not going through any specific order i'll just sort of put them together in some footage so we'll go through um some of the basic stuff first so um <laughs> right, so up on screen now mate we've got your raiders so i thought we'd start something quite basic now what i really love about this unit 
OJ, is, is, the, is the amount of colour you've managed to get in here, and they've still looked like it's part of the same army. I think it's that sort of comes from the fact that you've got quite a distinguished base in style, but um, lots of really nice colours in here. They're still quite muted down, but they're, there's lots of nice colours there. And also, you've got loads of loads of conversions, mate. Do you want to just talk us through like the conversion side of it and the um, the reason you went for like the quite vibrant colours in some of these? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um... Free Folk, like I said, I, I went pretty hard into, I wanted to make it my faction um, and wanted to have a sense of belonging. And the beauty of the internet now is you get to see what everyone else is doing, how they're painting things. And Free Folk, the typical Freed Folk is greys, browns, beiges. Um, and it, uh, to be honest, I really struggled to get started with painting them. And um, so many models, so much bare plastic on the shelf um, and I and I struggled really to put paintbrush to, to model um, and it was it was really difficult I knew I wanted them icy themed um, I, I really enjoy doing winter basing so that was a given but I didn't want to do what everyone else was doing um, and I, I just kind of um, picked up a model and uh, actually to be honest I started with um, some of the freed folk banners and i kind of thought okay they're bits of cloth um they're going to have been captured from different people different places um i can put a bit of color on a banner um and just have a bit of a play and test the waters so to speak and that worked really well and I kind of stood back looking at it thought crikey this this works quite well i'm going to try and put color into the raiders um and actually what's what's really interesting with this is if you look at a single raider model on its own like you said the colors are the colors are actually quite on one hand vibrant but when they're mixed in to a whole unit with all the other colors and their icy base it actually mutes that saturation down quite a bit and what you see is just a mass um of, of troops which is what it should look like but as an individual they're distinctive which I kind of felt really plays into what the freed folk is is really about they're individuals mashed together into this army um, and then in terms of the conversion I mean the, the raiders are that the, the models are a little bit old in the grand scheme of things um, there's what three four poses across the unit uh, and typically um certainly when i started most free folk armies were sev several four units of, of raiders and i wanted them to be distinctive i wanted them to be different um and i was uh, scoping around on the on the socials and this guy pointed me in in the direction of a couple of different kits and i kind of settled on the um, Mantic Kings of War have a um, Northern Alliance or something like that faction. The the models are although they're twenty eight mil scale, the the uh, arms and the weapons they're very slightly bigger than um, the cavities if you remove them from uh, from the actual Raider models, and uh, so it required quite a bit of cutting and sticking so to speak but um the beauty of that was then just units that are really different um while still maintaining that kind of cohesive rabble um if the river is such a thing <laughs> um but yeah it just it's just really cool to mix in some uh different type weapons some spears some swords um uh which then allows you to put a little bit of um Kind of non-metallic metal and rust in there which you wouldn't have otherwise uh, which mixes it up a bit some shields um really kind of gives it that kind of looted uh vibe yeah, yeah i think you think you got the nail straight ahead the there when you said it makes them look like um like a unit of individual uh characters it, it, it's really good mate you've done a really good job on them and it, we'll go we'll dig over, over the um the basin a bit more as well at some point because I mean, this is probably one of the most realistic snow basins that I've I've seen on, in any army. But let's let's move on to another unit now. So we're going to go on to your, on to your thin warriors, man. Now, what I really like about these is this really nice um, non-metallic uh, bronze colour you got going, and the red furs. It's really 
um, it's, it's not a, a sort of colour scheme that I've seen on things anywhere else. So it's something really individual done with these guys. But do you want to sort of talk us through why you went for bronze, why you went for red furs and you know, what sort of the, the idea is behind them? Yeah, it's it's kind of, it's really interesting. This this is kind of the box art, um, ironically, is is these kind of ready toned, um, they kind of sat around a fire, which probably throws the colour off anyway. But um, these kind of ready toned furs, uh, it's kind of the box art, the bronze, apparently they're the only uh, part of the Free Folk faction that's learnt to work uh, with metal, albeit bronze. So I knew I wanted bronze. Bronze plays really nicely off of red from a um, colour perspective anyway, so that, that was easy uh, to make those kind of decisions. Um, but at the same time, uh, they're kind of the more militant -y, uh part of what's been released so far. So I really like the sculpts. I really like the poses. Didn't really feel like they needed to change anything apart from using the basing to maybe slightly change the pose ever so slightly. Um, but at the same time, I kind of figured as the more militant faction, um, they're probably more likely to have metal uh, weapons because they they know uh, iron's going to going to be stronger against bronze necessarily. But bronze is what they've got to work with to to create their armor. The weapons actually called bronze weapons, isn't it? On the uh, on the, the card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, what I really like is how you've got the different levels as well. We'll see your the way you use different levels on on the bases to really make your unit stand out. But obviously these guys as well, you've got the guy with the spear at the back standing on sort of levels. Is there a specific way you rank these guys up or is it just however they land on the day? No, no, no. They are um they are as I kind of put a unit together, um, as you kind of alluded to, the base the base work kind of comes first with creating those levels and, and therefore kind of deciding where the models are going to go. So with these sort of units un under each model, there's a, a number marking 1 to 12 as to their position within the base uh, based on, on kind of, you know, that's that's how I saw them looking. I mean, the reality in something like the LGT or a tournament or something is as you're playing and taking models off and putting them back on again, they end up mixed up. Uh, through a tournament but that's that's how I um, uh, envisaged them and, and designed the base to, to, to work uh, and and like I say kind of creating those levels if, if it's just put in in a mishmash way then um, it, 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 it just becomes messy whereas if there's a undulation within the landscape and you follow that through, within the unit itself, it, it makes more sense to the eye. Um, yeah. and, you, and you can create some interesting options with that. So usually I'll tend to, within the back rank, have one corner or the other that will be more raised than the other. So when you're looking at it across the board, you see the the, the, the storied ranks uh, behind them. There's quite a lot, a lot of planning goes into the base name, which is, which is really cool. Yeah, so next up, man, we're gonna we're gonna move off the units, and um, we're gonna go on to what off of the infantry units, I should say. Uh, we're gonna go on to your mammoth. Now, I really I, I really like this guy. I really like how. Um, so for me, it's just it's quite a nice sit, quite muted down. You've gone for like a grey fur on it, really sort of muted down, uh, leather and brown. So if you there's no real sort of bright colours going on here, which is I, I really like. I'm I'm really a massive fan of realism i know we're living in this is a world full of dragons and and zombies and and woolly mammoths but i still like it to be as realistic as it can be if that makes sense so absolutely oh yeah, i'm a massive fan of this man but where is it this base is incredible you've got the ice schools there what, what is it you use for the ice schools on this on these bases uh yeah yeah so i um there's two products um that you can use um the one that i tend to use now is um liquitex super heavy gel um, and it's it's kind of like uh, it comes in a tub. You can get it from Hobbycraft, um, and it comes in this tub that kind of looks like well, it looks like white PVA. And you just uh, grab a brush, um, ladle up a dollop onto the brush, stick that dollop where you where you kind of want the icicle to be, and then over many kind of passes, you kind of work 
with the brush to pull that blob downward. So it's it's quite a kind of it's wet but wet but <laughs> wet but slippery but <laughs> sticky at the same time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's, it's, let's it, move on quickly. Yeah, let's move on quickly. <laughs> you just work to bring it downwards so it creates that icicle shape. And you can see what it's looking like at the time because it's it's white, but as it dries, it dries clear and it dries glossy. So it gives you that really nice kind of icicle effect that you can, using this methodology as opposed to uh, some of the others, you can you can come back to it later and... and build that icicle up and bring it even further down um, you can change the shape you can really mold it to what you want it to look like um, so yeah it's it's a cool uh, cool tool in the arsenal is there any shrinkage in it to start with so does, does it shrink down as it dries mm, very marginally not much no. at all and where does that come in in, in the basing like, sort of the schedule if you will is it, is it your base everything first then you put the icicles on last or do they go on but just before the snow yeah so um planning wise it's it's the base uh, building up the base comes first because the base determines how the model is going to sit and look on the base itself and whether i'm going to need to change the pose or how the pose lines up and looks when it's uh, sat across you on the battlefield so the base always comes first. Um, what you can see with the mammoth quite well, probably compared to other things, is uh, I use cork, um, which you can get the mats from IKEA or most hobby shops do mats of cork. I use that to, to kind of create the the rock uh, rocky areas. Uh, I'll use stuff out of my bits box um here i managed to pick up a, a resin um uh a couple of resin pieces to to represent a very dead cold hands uh in this case in particular Yay! Yay! Dead uh, cold hands. killing cold hands um <laughs> uh, but it was such a big piece it's kind of it was only ever going to look good on a mammoth base so uh perfect to slap in there um the 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 trees um i've i've literally just used twigs and stuff that i've picked up off the floor dried out and picked those ones that look look cool so the idea with this guy is he's kind of trampling through uh rocky outcrop the 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 trunk has kind of been pushed to one side by his his weight kind of lumbering through um and he's and he's stomping over cold hands because who doesn't want to stomp over cold hands i want to stomp over cold hands right now mm -hmm. right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then kind of comes the 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 um undercoating the painting um and then uh static uh, not static grass um pump foliage uh on the bottom the snow because ultimately icicles are only going to form where there's snow uh, built up in the first place anyway so the snow goes on that helps to dictate the position of the icicles the icicles come last completely my fault we've deviated quite uh, off, off course a little bit with a mammoth so do, do you want to sort of talk about the mammoth as well while we're here might as well it's a, it's a byproduct of the awesome basin <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean i've seen quite a few um kind of brownie toned mammoths uh floating around um so i kind of figured I, I want to do something different um hadn't seen many gray i mean originally to be fair in my mind was going to be um heading up towards white uh, um as the as the more kind of dominant fur color but i i got got the fur to this sort of point um and and really liked uh, how it was looking the contrast levels were quite nice within the fur itself um then went on to the, the 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 leather work there that there's quite a bit um had thought of doing mixing it up a little bit and having different colors of leather which i've done on other pieces mm. but actually the piece is so big that if I, I kind of felt if i did if i threw lots of different colors in on the leather it would it would again it would just make it look really messy and um, not particularly planned or thought out uh which which i guess to a degree isn't really keeping in free folk being all all kind of one tone but i figured the um the the, the shields the saddle bags the the spear bag uh and the tusks would all 
bring some different colors in that actually when you're looking at it your eye picks up the gray um that works quite nicely against the snow the leather is then kind of the second dominant color that you that jumps out at you but that's uh pulled down a little bit by the other splashes of color that your eye gets drawn to all right so it's, it's a really nice place mate it's uh definitely a centerpiece to, to your army for sure yeah yeah big um, big, big stompy um it, it it had to stand out it had to look cool um but I, but again with a really big piece you throw too much color at it it just looks messy well talking of big pieces let's just go into your next one mate so we've got mag the mighty so um the big boy himself up. The big man himself, mate. And uh, again, this is one of the poses. I love this pose on this, on this miniature. I've, it's one I've never painted uh, much free folk. I've painted a, a mammoth for Mickey, Mickey on stats, but I've always wanted to paint Mag because that's just such a quality looking pose. Um, mm. But let's get let's get into your painting, mate, because your, your painting is just as incredible as the sculpts in here. I mean, it's re what I really like is these undertone, these under sort of bits of purple you got on Magia. He's the king of the giants, isn't he? He's got to have some purple on him. <laughs> <laughs> he needs he needs some silky pants. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like how you've got it on there. And it, it doesn't... A purple, it should jump out at you. But you've managed to quite subdue the colour and make it quite muted. Um, again, it might it may have something to do with the fact that it's quite a, a bright base you've got going on here. Um, but yeah, this, mate, this is an incredible paint job again. And the, obviously the, um, the tattoo around the nipple as well. That's a... Uh, yeah, it was a really nice little touch, mate. Do you want to talk us through the, the painting process of Meg? Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, <laughs> after after Chris absolutely stomped the floor with us uh, last year um, with the best painting with his uh, free hand across his whole Lannister army, which kind of made me a little bit sick, uh, to be honest, because <laughs> uh, free folk just... It, it, it just doesn't lend itself to... Um, to freehand at all and yeah. you know I've, I've been around long enough to know um freehand on an army or on a single piece is always gonna stand out draw a lot of respect um but I'd, I'd really struggled up until coming to mag to find anything that i could i could really do much with from a freehand perspective because it just doesn't really fit with the free folk aesthetic mm. um i've done a little bit previously with uh um, skull tattoo on Steyr that I ran the previous year um, yeah. and my Abel the Bard has got a little bit of freehand at, at, at the back of his cloak but you don't really see that a lot on the back of his model Yeah. so I kind of came to came to Mag and I mean, much like you I've, I've always um, loved Mag's pose he just looks like um it, it, it looks like a boss, doesn't he, really? Yeah. And um, so I always knew, again, with Mag, I wasn't going to change anything. I loved the pose, um, but needed to do the model justice. And the purple the purple came in. I mean, I'd used purple um, a little bit elsewhere with the Raiders, so I knew I could use it safely, but not too dominantly. Because, like you say, otherwise, if I'd have used it on like the topmost level... Um, of his skirts or skins or whatever you call them, then then it would stand out too much. It would completely draw the eye, and and you've then kind of lost the the, the viewer in this haze of purple that shouldn't really be there. Um, but like I said, he is he is king of the giants. He needed a bit of royal purple on him. Um, I I deliberately went therefore for this really muted purple tone rather than the usual kind of uh bright vibrant option that you that you come across and it just worked i think what what helps on this piece i mean i'm no art expert at all but i think the the blue toned um uh hair or fur whatever you want to call it on him helps helps to um draw that down a little bit because uh, obviously purple's got a bit of blue into it so it, it kind of merges together and so your eye notices the purple but it it's not completely drawn just to that one color so so with the purple how how do you manage to get that muted is that just what what color do you mix to it to make it that quite a nice like sort of toned down purple is it like a bone color you mix with it or 
I'm gonna I'm gonna completely blow your mind now, Grant, um, and and tell you that that none of these models have been painted with acrylic paints. Oh, okay. All, all of them from well, other than the only bit of acrylic on them is the spray paint um, yeah. that I've used to base paint them. Ev everything else, uh, so I don't use an airbrush at all. Um, on on any of these models i i really struggled to get on with airbrushing um before i got into song of ice and fire i somehow fell into using oil paints uh, okay. to paint models with um so all of these models are from from the undercoat upwards are painted with oils exclusively wow. um other, right. other than i guess the one other little bit is the the black rim um around the bases is is an acrylic it's um what is it uh Pro Acryl Black Prime um, yeah. around the rims, but otherwise it's it's all in oils. So the really nice thing with oils, um, if you can get your head around them, and it's and it's a really big jump from acrylics to to oils. They work in a really different way. But the um, when you're working with oils, the oils are wet uh, and they're wet for a really long time. So you don't need a wet palette at all with oils. Um, the colours mix on the model itself, yeah. um, so which which is the really nice thing. And that's kind of what has allowed me to get the blends as, as smooth as they are, because you can add a colour to lighten, darken, colour shift. Um, I mean, you can move from greens to yellows, blues to purples to reds, whatever you want. But you can then, um, where the paint is still wet on the model, you can then feather that colour into the colour that's below and create this really gradual, um, uh, really smooth blend uh, that, 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 that you kind of see here. So actually, um, I think with that purple was, was literally adding um, white um, in gradual wow. amounts um, and, and building it up that way. And it, it just kind of, you don't just see the white because it's, it's not, um, the white is not sat just on top of the purple, it's mixing with the purple. You, and then as the oil set, you can then still come back to that model and you can, a bit like with the uh, metal work that you were referring to with the fens, you can come back later with a really light colour once those oils have set and you can add your edge highlights that are then really sharp because they're not blending into the colours that are below because those colours below have already set. So you okay. can kind of do both angles with the oils, albeit, like I said, it, it's 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 a really big, it's a really big adjustment in your in your how you approach painting. We've got a special time to refer. Got to pick your brains because my next question was going to be, but you've already just answered it, was how you got the awesome blend on the on the bone tusks on his on his waist. Obviously, it's yeah. the oils that are allowing to make them, them blend. It's the oils, yeah. So it's literally started from, um, uh, I think with that was from a Van Dyke brown. So <laughs> that's the thing with oils. They're all very arty colours, <laughs> um, or called arty colours. Um, so literally worked from a, from a Van Dyke brown up to a kind of yellowy ochre, which you see kind of midway yeah. down. But it's that, that yellowy ochre isn't just confined to the middle. You can see it blending up into the brown. Um, and then working down to kind of a, a, a creamy, bony tone, and then finally at the tip, a white, and, and literally just feathering it upwards. So kind of, um, I mean, that blending is kind of similar to the work that you do with acrylics, with a with a wet palette and uh, wet blending, all that sort of side of things. Whereas with acrylics, you've got to work really fast, uh, really efficiently to, to, to do that. Um, for me, working on on mag, um, I did it over most of it over two days, um, evenings, um, and throughout those two days, all of the paint on mag was wet. Nice, well, it's quite brilliant, brilliantly, mate. It's really good, mate. Done your credit there. Uh, was was mag one of your commanders? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, <laughs> more for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <Yeah. laughs> right, so what, whilst we're on giants, then we might as well move to some, and uh, talk about some more giants. Next yeah. up, we've got one one. Now, this is actually on one of the bases we're going to talk about later on, which is this cracked uh, glass icy effect. So we won't talk about it now, because <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about one one, because I love what you've done 
with the fists because you've only got <laughs> chains, right? These aren't these aren't uh, off the shelf chains he's running around with. You've got them <laughs> there, him right yeah. up, give him a critical blow. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, his his his. I knew I had some work to do with one one because. Um, when he stood next to Mag, Mag, Mag is so his pose and, and posture and his sculpt is is so imposing compared to um, one one. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I kind of like the pose, but it it, it doesn't. Um, it's not it's not the same as Mag. Um, he's got pummeling fists, and I kind of sat there thinking, okay, he's got pummeling fists, but I, I, I've got to do one of two things: either I've got to scrape up and bloody his his knuckles and fists to represent that you know he's going into uh knights of castly rock or something and smashing them up he's gonna he's gonna get hurt uh or, or bruised up from that perspective or um he's gonna grab some portcullis chains and something and and wrap them around his fists and he's he's really gonna go to town on you and put the fear of god into you um so, uh, so yeah, I had some chains from years and years ago when I tried to convert uh, the old metal cauldron of blood uh, years and years ago from uh, fantasy with the Dark Elf range. And yeah. uh, so I had it left in, in my bits box and I kind of thought, oh, do you know what, let's, let's give it a go. Let's try and wrap some, wrap some uh, chains around him, just a spot of... Um, Super glue to hold one end, drag it around. Uh, hot, dot of super glue to hold it in place again. Let that all dry and, and harden up a little bit, and then come back and add another uh, uh, string uh, of, of chain to it. So just built it up, and then used super glue with the uh, bits of chain that you see flying to to create that element of enhance kind of really making the pose look like he's striding forwards and the chains yeah. are swinging as he's going so really kind of um enhancing that that silhouette and the sense of movement um but at the same time building up the the base in such a way that it looks like he's almost a little bit like an american football blitzer he's, he's kind of running past this uh, rocky outcrop to come around and swing his left fist into your face. Yeah, you've definitely achieved that enormous sense of movement with this this conversion. I've only got one problem with it though. Like, why is he not? <laughs> why is he not ginger? <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute uh... disgrace. He should be ginger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. Um, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, there are there are there are, <laughs> there are gingers in the army, um, but the giants. So, so the savage giant, which I suspect we're going to come on to next, um, was actually the first giant model that I painted, and I'd, I'd really, um, I'd, I didn't want them to look entirely human um in their color tones so i'd used uh, a, a blue as the um, base tone to work up from in with the skin which then meant in my mind i had to use the blue to carry through with the fur because that's their natural physiology um which then kind of meant um well mag is he's older he's the king he's going to be whiter um more grayed out than the savage um and then one one I, I, in my mind he's kind of this uh slightly younger um impetuous youth uh so he, he still needed that uh bluey tone it's much darker but he needed yeah. that bluey tone and therefore his his hair is uh a, a younger dark tone yeah so yeah no 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 ginger there just a bit of rust on his uh metal uh <laughs> plates on his shoulder <laughs> ginger rust mate yeah yeah oh, cool. <laughs> you did speak about it so we'll, we'll crack right into it then so we've got your savage giant here as well so you've sort of spoke a little bit about there trying to keep the the bluish tone so yeah is there anything you really want to add to this to talk about this guy i mean it's again it's incredible base but well, all of your stuff's incredible but it's the the basing and the paint job yeah no i think we've 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 touched on um well, I've already kind of referenced that the, the big bit with this is the skin leading into the hair, which 
like I say, is their natural physiology. So that had to blend and work together. Um, particularly as a large imposing piece, it's it's got to work. Um, and again, I guess on this one, in terms of the basing, you can really see more so with this one to a degree, uh, using that, that good old skeleton, vampire skeletons uh, bits yeah. box. And um, again, just the, the nice thing with that is you can, although it's, you look at the base and yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's snowy, but it can seem, snow bases can seem quite, bland um and plain so the static grass the clump the clump foliage or whatever it's called um adds a bit of color difference things like the that that little banner on the spear and the the shield can add a splash of color that otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't have on a base yeah. um, and it drags you away from that monotony uh, while still keeping the theme yeah well i mean if there's one for this model was lacking it was high so it's nice you brought it up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> Carlo would hate it, I'm sure. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, heroic rocks uh, around, I guess you could argue. Um, <laughs> but hey, uh, the, the, the thing for me is always the rule of cool. Uh, if it looks cool, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, again, mate, you know, we're both saying we, it's, it's, it's the hobby is so, so important. I find the painting very therapeutic, so I use it as like a just a way mm. of just chilling out and painting. So, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. It's, Exactly. I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, I completely get it for a lot of people painting, painting isn't comfortable. It's not, it's not, uh, their, their means of, of letting off, but I think certainly working in the profession I do, you kind of become really conscious of your own mental health and well being. And so for me, escaping of an evening once the kids are in bed and everything's kind of settled down into the study peaceful quiet sometimes with my missus on the other side doing her um uh craft work to just sit there and paint and lose yourself in this mm. fantasy world is is a great uh source of of um uh relief and uh uh, uh well-being for me i totally feel the same i totally mirror that um and talking of mirrors, we're now looking at your, char <laughs> we're looking at your chariot, mate. Now, this is the first miniature that I saw of yours that really sort of caught me eye because you've really gone to town on this ice effect. So, what we'll do is we'll break we'll break this down into two parts. Now, we're going to talk about the chariot because what I really like about this chariot is again you've got loads of really nice, vibrant but still quite muted colours like the yellows, the blues, the greens, even the fact you've got one of these um, dogs as like almost like in a foxy colour. So. Yeah, it's really nice, mate. So we'll talk about your painting first, but then we, I think we should take some time talking over your basin as well. So do you want to talk to me about the, the chariot and what you try to achieve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the I mean, this was, uh, I did this for the last LGT when chariots were massively OP. Uh, massively there needed, OP. There, <laughs> <laughs> there, there needed to be a chariot in there. Um, but at the same time, oh my God, any anyone that's painted this, will will know exactly what i'm saying when i say this is such uh, for a painter such a fiddly bloody um piece to work with and it's it's kind of cool um that simon and 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 the guys put these out as uh, ready out the box but to come at this and paint this is is uh, absolutely hellish um so that's why I've only done one of them. I haven't done the other because it was <laughs> such a such a nightmare. Um, but I literally, for this piece, um, I detached everything I possibly could uh, very, very carefully. So the wheels came off, um, the, uh, the riders came off, um, and I think I detached... Uh, the wolves were still together on, on that kind of harness but the wolves were detached from the chariot uh, uh, wooden baseboard itself as well. So it was in quite a few different pieces to try and do it. And e even even doing that, it was it was hard going. So I think if I was to to face the other chariot at some point, I'd, I'd probably break it into even, even more bits, I think, uh, to make it more achievable. But I wanted, um, uh, again, a bit like everything else, I wanted a mix of colours in there. Um, it's really nice that you pick out the, the the kind of foxy wolf. To be honest, it didn't quite come. I, I'm not a hundred percent happy with how he 
came out the the blend between the red fur and the beige um i i personally am not 100 percent happy with how that came out i i'd hope for something a bit smoother um but but at the same time um i you know at the end of the day if you if you spend forever trying to perfect a model you'll you'll never get it done so um progress not perfection uh yeah. it's a motto um so 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 just kind of went with it um really difficult with the free folk kind of thinking about materials that they'd use for building uh, a chariot so i did i did go with iron rims just because that makes the most sense they they're working in really rocky mountainous uh, areas so the, those wheels have got to be bloody sturdy in in like you said earlier that kind of touch of realism because um, yeah. uh, any other material they're just going to smash apart in seconds well um, he's, he's barreling towards that rock in front of him if he hits that <laughs> and it's, not made, it's not made of iron he's going to go full gladiator and flip it <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Um, there had to be some conversion work. So um, on the yoke itself, there's a, um, a, a change that slightly with, I think, uh, a skull on the front, kind of make it a bit more imposing. Uh, yeah. The two riders have got different weapons. Again, just to change the silhouette as much as anything else. Um, uh, I'm not sure with the second one whether I'll keep it entirely stock or whether i'll change it up again I, I don't know at the moment i'm i'm delaying putting off <laughs> that sucker uh, especially now they've gone up in points as well i'm not i'm not desperate to run to anytime soon um yeah. but yeah i had to have color I had to kind of have um uh kind of imagine the bottom of that chariot being some sort of um seal or whale skin or something something kind of thick and hard but uh some sort of skin uh, wood framework, plenty of bone. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. Well, yeah, let's, let's talk about this base then. So, so what, <laughs> how do you do these bases with the ice? Come tell us your deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's well, they they look really awesome, don't they? But they are they are actually really quite um, relatively simple in the grand scheme of things. And this was the first model that I did this sort of. Um, cracked uh, ice base work with for the last lgt and and I, I had so many people come up to me and and ask me about it and and really rave about it so i kind of knew with what i was working on for this year's lgt that i had to do more of that uh, sort of base work. i didn't want it to be the the everything but there needed to be more of it so this was the first first kind of stab at it and um again Oils is the base work, um, so it's a really that that kind of almost black that you see. It's not true black. It's a mix of um, dark blue, touch of green, um, and a bit of black in there to kind of really deepen it, darken it down. And then using the oils to um, uh, gain just with a you know you can go straight to the white. It doesn't matter because it's going to blend into what's already there. So what you'll end up with because it's wet on wet won't be white um so sketching out first of all where the cracks are going to be with the white blending that into um the color below to to create that kind of fade out look um yeah. so I, i'd looked a lot um in advance because you know loads of people have done ice work i mean when i did my aos army i used um i cut out the bases and used resin to create truly cracked ice that was poking up and all over the place i didn't have time to do that and uh using magnets to hold the trays for transportation etc so that's just going to be an absolute pain in the backside uh that i just didn't really want to deal with um so painted you know the base what you see is painted it's entirely painted um feather it out to create that fade effect and then going back and thinning those lines more and more based on some picture reference that i'd got from a, a fairly famous lake in russia um that is this kind of crystal clear 
um, frozen, permanently frozen lake, which uh, looks beautiful. Um, my my bases don't truly represent that, but you know the th the the idea is there. Um, yeah. uh, and then over the so once that was dry, I mean I should say almost dialing the clock back, uh, I sanded the base to make it uh, paper smooth uh, oh, to start okay. with. Oh, yeah, yeah. So completely got rid of because because they've got that very kind of slight grain to them, haven't they? Yeah. Um, when you kind of get them out of the box. So the bit that was going to be ice was sanded completely flat first. Not not all the way to the bottom because I still wanted to represent the um, little lines that you've got for the uh, arcs, etc. So they're still yeah. they're still there. I've not gone below that. Um, but taking it down to get rid of that texture, painted it. Um, and then over the top of that, I've used Woodland Scenic's uh, realistic water um, painted on uh, lots of layers uh, to, to get this yeah. effect. Just to just to get the just to get it smooth enough across the entirety that that you look at it and you kind of think that is perfectly smooth, perfectly flat. The cracks are underneath a layer of ice that's formed over the top of it is uh, is what i was trying to go for realistic water it does um it does shrink very slightly as it dries um which yeah. again kind of necessitated the mul multiple coats to make sure it was coming right up to the edges of the base and creating that kind of realistic look yeah I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, just, I'm just as we're looking at this, this base turning, I also love how the fact you've managed to get, I don't know if you've done it on purpose or by accident, but a little bit of snow on a dog's tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like he's been licking it. Come on, boy, we're going to war. Stop eating the ice. <laughs> that, that might be slightly accidental on the dog's tongue, but... Um, it looks uh, it looks good, though, man. I like it. I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. realistic. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and also, the, the other thing I wanted to try and capture um, with this, if you spin round to the, to the back angle, where the chariot's going over a patch of snow, um, one, of, one of the wheels is actually kicking up some of that snow behind it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, just kind of... I, I, I just kind of think those touches of, of um, realism um, really just help draw the viewer's eye really really make you kind of pull into it and think oh crikey okay i can i could in my mind's eye i could see this kind of in the real world spinning over this icy lake heading towards us kicking up snow it is coming <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna, gonna get hit by a small car pulled by dogs. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, next up, we're going to go to uh, one of your character models, and this is one of my favourites. In fact, everything you everything you've done with the bears is is probably my favourite. Um, my favourite of your work, but Varimir especially looks absolutely incredible. So you've obviously detached him from the base. Um, you built the base up around him again. Um, but again, I had questions about stuff I was going to ask you, and a lot of it was about getting these blends but obviously you've already answered that when you've said about the oil but because things like the things like the nose on the bear and getting the black to really sort of merge into the polar bear sort of yeah. uh, it's absolutely incredible mate but yeah talk, talk us through your sort your various uh, your various not various not various is he? <laughs> yeah, the other ball bloke not that bald <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so yeah i mean that the oils the oils can really help um the polar bears, uh, I, I did all of the polar bears and Faramir all at the same time because uh, I wanted consistency across the bears whilst a, a little bit of variation. So I wanted Faramir's bear to be, uh, he's, 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 I mean, you compare them side to side, he is a much bigger bear than the others. So I wanted him to be a bit darker, be a little bit different um, to the others, but have the same sort of... Um, tonalities so you can see they're coming from the same sort of stock yeah um so yeah working working up from um quite a dark brown base took quite a while actually to blend it up to this this kind of creamy tone and i'd looked at um again at, you know polar bears you know they're in the real world you can you can look at uh, images online and when you think of polar bears, you think they're white, but actually, in reality, they're not. They're more this kind of yellowy tone. I've not captured that perfectly. It's a miniature representation, so you've got to 
uh, in some instances you can bend reality uh, mm -hmm. to suit your needs a little bit and to pull it off uh, which which worked really well so the other bears are kind of a touch lighter uh, in color tone than this one is um, yep. tricky tricky because of the paleness to put um, shadows in the right places um, yeah. can be a little bit tricky but yeah the blend the blend on the nose is is really nice because when you first paint it you've just got this morass of pale um, fur and you look at it and you're kind of like oh my goodness it's it's you know what's what's interesting about this model it's it's just getting lost um, Faramir breaks it up quite nicely the eagle um, going for those lighter tones on the feathers helps yeah. to pull your eye between the two um, so you're not just looking at the polar bear um, the the bits of green light where Verum is controlling them and influencing them kind of comes again from the box art uh, I quite liked the idea um, and again I thought it created a variation and a difference to the polar bear unit itself um so so uh i used um who did i use for that a um fluorescent uh, uh a, a very light fluorescent green to to create that um yeah it's just really nice really nice um yeah and varamir and the eagle just help break it up which which it needs because otherwise it's just that polar bear it's huge um yeah so presumably the the green eyes never came from your real life pictures in no, no, no. no. <laughs> I was going to say because if, if that's a picture you're taking yourself, you need to, you need to pull back, pull back quite quickly. <laughs> but, um, the, the, the thing is, well, so we were talking a bit about, about Varimir here, and it's, it's again, you've done a great job on him. Um, but we're, I'm going to move us on because we're going to have, have a look at another four of these again in a minute, and we've got to have some stuff to talk about there. Um, mm. But we're going to go through some of Varimir's companions. So first up on the screen, we've got your dogs. Now, I mean, I love what you've done here. Um, I love these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did think it's a great way. Whenever I've got actually got uh, Tom Sims uh, in my in my, my garage in my man cave, ready to do exactly the same thing, but you beat me to it. So I can't <laughs> I can't forgive you for that. But I mean, it, you, you, you have made them look incredible, man. This is yeah. this is having them bunched together on that little base was so. I really didn't like it, but with this how I imagined they should be, man. So. Yeah, talk us through it. Balls are cool. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. They're bun they're bunched up on that base, and I, I, I mean, putting it in um, the model maker's eyes, I can I can understand why they've kind of done that because they're they're following their convention of all of the models sitting on that round base, so they've they've got to be crammed together to fit onto that space. But yeah, like you. Um, Yes, they're there as a pack. They they wolves hunt and fight as a pack, but um, not that bunched together. They spread out. So um, a bit of research. The the, the different wolves uh, have got slightly different colour tonalities to them. Um, so I wanted to get that across. They've got slightly different personalities to them. Um, so again, I wanted to see if breaking them apart, I could somehow tease that out with with kind of someone going front and center another guy kind of you know a bit sly coming up on this branch to pounce over and gain the height advantage um and another one kind of looking ahead seeing what's seeing what's happening let the others maybe make the first move before um kind of diving in around the flank maybe so um so yeah they had to be broken apart this this lump of wood tree um uh, just kind of stumbled across and and actually it's um uh, it's a bit of a branch from a hedge that's actually upside down uh, ironically but it just it just had this beautiful um shape to it and that kind of sticky out branch that i thought oh yeah okay a wolf could be creeping up along that and leaping off so that was the first thing that went down um and and kind of modeled where that wolf would be the rest of it kind of came from there really and um bolton's bolton's weren't uh were, were on the horizon um as their own faction as i was painting this so 
the colours on the the shield and the the rag. Well, that had to be Bolton, uh, as far as I was concerned. Um, kind of a bit of a revenge for those Bolton bastard girls, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, powerful, powerful dogs, mate. Powerful do- yeah. dog, dog warfare. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next up, we've got another companion. We've got um, the eagle on screen now. Now again, this is um, I'm not really up to date with how the model comes but this is the whole the tree bits not part of the model is it that's that's a conversion right yeah 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 so the 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 trouble when they when they released varamir is the eagle was um a very very slightly um in fact i think it's almost identical pose on an identical bit of twig to the um shapeshifters that you could get um before so you kind of sat yeah. there with three eagles that oh, you never going kind to of play with all three eagles but they're all exactly the same so again for me that was a that was a no go Faramir he's 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 the big bad he's got to have something really unique uh, going on to stand out uh, it's going to be placed next to your opponent's models so if it's nice and big and tall I might actually remember to use the shift um, <laughs> so it kind of helps me out a little bit um but yeah that's uh so cut him off that little bit of twig because it's 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 just too low down and so then positioning him on on this allowed me to then um position him differently so he kind of in the the typical pose is he looks uh, kind of like a 45 degree angle i guess yeah. um whereas with this he's kind of arched back uh raising his wings is is even more imposing um as as a as a model on its own even though you know that actual model the 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 bit of the eagle is actually quite small uh, in the yeah. grand scheme of things but yeah show, showing off his colors uh, getting a good look around something you know a twig like that with uh, with the branches coming off just creates the perfect opportunity for icicle work uh, yeah. so yeah really enjoyed that yeah he's got his come at me bro pose yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> Right, so next up, mate, we've got my my favourite unit you've done, which is, which is the um, the bears. Um, I need to I need to give you some praise here before we get talking about it. But <laughs> everything you've done here is absolutely spot on. The colours are absolutely spot on. The poses you've chosen for the guys, oh sorry, the guys, the girls at the back. <laughs> at the back, you know, the, the, my favourite one being the highest bear that's looking down over the edge, and the one that's roaring. You've got the two at the front of the ones that seem to be more movement oriented if that's what makes sense so they're moving yeah um yeah you, i don't uh, you've not done and also the angry little fox in the back back as well so <laughs> just in yeah. case uh just in case 16 wounds weren't enough for you <laughs> <laughs> one extra <laughs> <But> yeah, if <laughs> only <laughs> <laughs> but it's a- absolutely incredible mate you've you've done um i mean this is this is a, a unit that people dream of having as a, as a centre centrepiece yeah. unit so yeah well done mate that's absolutely, absolutely well, I'll, I'll swear because my, my podcast is absolutely <laughs> I was, I was incredible say, I'll set you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so do you, do you want to talk us about this man was it was yeah. it was, was it a, an active choice to make these a uh, centrepiece to get the poses yeah. right did you choose those poses on purpose yeah uh, yeah uh, all of it is um uh, actually really intentional um that I mean, even when you're building something like this and you've you've kind of got a vision in your head, um, it, it, I, I tend to find things that that vision as it materialises changes slightly as time goes by. But um, yeah, I mean, much like you, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm the last person to to stroke my own ego at all. If anyone that knows me, but um, really super chuffed with this unit. It just came out better than better than I even anticipated it being the the uh you know that they're, they're a really imposing unit they're the, at the moment the only unit in the game with 16 wounds they needed to have board presence as a as a unit amidst everything else that i've got um i knew i mean originally my my original plan would was to try and I always wanted the icy base. Uh, I had thought of replicating the box art and having some sort of little campfire, but the models, how they're posed, don't lend themselves to being around a campfire. Mm. Um, so although that was in my mind originally, that idea was scrapped quite early on. Um, I knew I wanted height. Um, 
I spent quite a long time looking at the models themselves. And like you said, the, the, the two at the front are the two that are uh, more dynamically posed. The other two were um, on kind of rocky, they had slight rocks molded to the base anyway that I cut away to, to create my own design and own uh, posture. But they were the two more static ones. So it just made sense that those two would be at the back. Um, I haven't done anything to change the weapons or the riders uh, at all. So again, looking at the unit, um, you can kind of see at the front, there's uh, one that's kind of angling the spear down, one that looks like they're charging forward. And the two that are static at the back, you kind of get a semi-mirrored uh, pose. One looks like they're kind of charging, the other one looks like they're stabbing downwards. So I alternated... Um, between the two to create that variation um the the the, the posing is just uh, absolutely perfect you know one really really up high really bearing down looking to see what's what's happening below this other guy kind of roaring from the back the fox is again from that mantic box that i used for the weapon conversions okay um and he'd been sat on the sprue and it's kind of like oh this cute little fox is cool um, and I kind of thought, well, there's there's other animals. He might feel comfortable around them to, to come out. He's come out of his little den, and he's having a having a uh, you know these other bears are roaring. He's joining in with with what's going on. I just thought he's he's just that. I mean, these other models are so big, and you've got the really big rock work. Yes, you can then put the the icicles and the snow in, but otherwise, it could look quite. Um, bland and and a bit meh um so adding him in was kind of a way of of creating a bit of a bit of visual interest um a bit different to any of the other i mean there are some skulls tucked away if you look carefully enough um yeah, but the little gems man i just watch them spin around they're just they're tucked in this they just the, the attention to detail is absolutely incredible yeah yeah they're just they're just tucked away they're really subtle he's he's a bit more blatant um and he is really there to just create that visual difference um, visual interest from everything else that's that's going on on that base while still keeping uh in with the theme of what's going on um yeah. but yeah they worked they worked beautifully i mean I, like i said kind of with varamir I, I worked on him at the same time the fur on the polar bears came first, uh, and then everything else kind of stemmed from there. And it, it, it had to, I mean, there's colours there. You can see yellows, greens, bluey greys, um, touch a uh, touch purple on that front right one, for example, on the tunic. Um, the colours had to be there, but they, almost more so than the raiders and everything, they had to be really soft. They had to be really muted so that they were, they were there to create the visual interest and, and the variation, but uh, they didn't take over from really what you want to see when you look at this unit and you want to see those bloody big bears. <laughs> yeah, 100%, mate, 100%. So, um, yeah, just while we, just because I think this is the last unit we'll be looking at before heading on to your characters, what what is the snow effect that you use here? Yeah, snow effects. There are so many bloody snow effects out there. Yeah. Um, so what I've used is... Um, uh, crushed glass uh, mixed with ah, you, know, you can mix yeah. it either with realistic water or again um, that medium that I was talking about earlier the Liquitex super heavy gel you can use that to mix with it as well um, the nice thing with with the gel is it gives you a little bit more body than the water does although even with the water if you're mixing it uh, the right concentration you can get quite thick clumpy snow uh, using that methodology so it, it, you know uh, you can water down the super heavy gel, uh, gel so you can work with either medium uh, from that perspective the trouble with the crushed glass is you can't bloody get it in this country anymore um, the, the the company that produced it before um, secret weapon scenics I think it was called um, uh, I, don't, I don't know what happened but they disappeared off the face of the planet um and so it's it's really hard to get get hold of it now and i'm literally down to the dregs of the pot that i've got so uh, <laughs> so more more free folk might be a while in coming 
um, just because the, the the import costs and everything to get it in is is so exorbitant that it's a bit of a um, with four, with four kids um, it's <laughs> it's it's a bit of a uh, financial expenditure uh, to be honest when I'd rather have more models uh, <laughs> yeah, more yeah. more plastic more good um, yeah. but yeah it's 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 a beautiful uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to unlike most other products that are kind of ready straight out the pot or straight out the bag um uh, and it takes a little while to get used to it in that it can look really wet it can look really dry and powdery once you get used to it that's kind of the real advantage of it is that you can um once you understand it you can work it both ways so you can have thick clumped up snow that looks white and powdery but you can then also have that blending into this kind of uh, wet slush around the yeah. side um, which which really appealed to me I didn't want that I've worked with other snow products before I didn't want um, just thick white uh, over the bases I wanted there to be variation if you're going to have icicles well generally speaking icicles occur when snow melts so the snow needed to have that sense of melt and then reaccumulation for me to rationally in my mind have the icicles yeah, yeah, oh, and, cr- and crushed glass gives you that. Yeah, yeah, it's the most realistic snow that, that I've ever seen and worked with. So I, I did presume it was going to be that, but I'm glad you said it was because I was. <laughs> Hell, if, that, if it isn't crushed glass, I need to know what it is. And I need to buy some right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is crushed glass and it's not available anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, and I was going to say, you know, and, and anyone that's out there that comes across it. Um, and, and you can get it at a reasonable price or you're ordering it in, uh, hit me up because I will I will go in, I'll share postage and delivery with you because I need some more of that stuff. <laughs> you you do not need any more free folk. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've already got plenty of free folk. It's just grey, well, not grey plastic, it's green plastic staring at me, begging begging to be painted. But at the same time, I'm not, I'm not going to... Um, I've, I've got other stuff to do, which we might talk about at the end, maybe. But um, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm uh, free folk. I'm just finishing off um, the Shadow Cat now because I didn't have time to do him, and he wasn't included in the, the list for LGT. So I'm just working on him at the moment. The last of the snow will probably uh, be used on his base, and then then the free folk will probably go on hold for a little bit uh, until I've got more of that crushed glass. Yeah. So. Nice. Well, let's, so let's move on to your characters. So what I'm going to do is, is um, I'll sort of introduce the characters on this on this one dial we've got here, and then we'll go through some of what your, your favourite bits maybe of these characters yeah. and what what's, what is what you're most proud of. So we've got we've got Lady Val there, front and centre, key to any free folk army. <laughs> uh, Borok with, with no boar, interesting choice there with his big double-handed axe. Craster, who um, again linchpin in most free folk armies as a fat old man. Uh, the, the walrus again, awesome choice colours on on the, the great walrus. Uh, Mance playing you a little song on his little lute, uh, <laughs> presumably just uh, off the shelf ray leader with some decent conversion work. So, mate, these are all you know, we wouldn't expect even less of you uh, of your characters after seeing the units. But to talk us through these guys and what your favourite parts are. Yeah, 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 sure. So, um, well, let's start with the raid leader first. Um, a bit of conversion work, uh, including the shield, um, instead of that other axe hand. It, it, again, popping him in a unit, he with with that change to the silhouette, it, it's 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 actually quite massive. Popping that shield in, it's it's quite a big lump of shield. It changes the silhouette, it changes the pose, um, and just just. He, he, he looks pretty. He looks pretty up for a fight, doesn't he? Even though he's got a stone weapon in his hand, he's 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 ready for, yeah. for uh, anyone to come at him, really. Um, uh, and then a little bit of free hand on on that shield on the floor was uh, my son's army's Lannisters. So that was meant to be a, a kind of a lion's paw uh, sticking up. So he's he's there, giving the giving the proverbial middle finger to my son's Lannisters uh, there. Uh, so yeah, 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 pretty much, pretty much. Um, Val, um, yeah, Val, well, Val and Craster both, like you said, staples in a free folk army. Um, Val was really interesting because I, you know, there's not uh, other than the spear fighty spear wives and the um, frozen shore bear riders. There's not an awful lot of ladies, and 
most of the other ladies and most of the other factions, you can kind of go to town with really bright, vibrant um, uh, colours and, and really make them stand out. But you, you don't expect to see an awful lot of that in Free Folk. And most of the imagery of Val is she's in greys, whites. Um, uh, and, and so bringing colour in was tricky. Um, so what I tried to do with Val is try and make her blonde hair um, really blonde, but without being yeah. um, unrealistic. So your, your eyes drawn to that uh, colour. Um, and then with her her outfit, I, I kind of knew she's kind of this solitary stand stand apart uh, persona. So I went with the grey, but with the kind of shawl that goes over her arms, tried to create um, what might look a little bit like a diaphanous, uh, transparent fabric, kind of like almost like a um, maybe almost something that's like a, a, a woven yeah. knit or something. Um, where it's got that kind of uh, what's the word embroidery on on lace is what I was trying to to go for. So you've got a bit of the yeah. color of the arm yeah. showing through on that bit, um, just to create a bit of visual difference. Borok without his boar, I, I mean, he's a great two point attachment uh, in in a unit of free folk raiders. So drops him down to a single point. It gives them a uh, bonus to their morale, which is shocking in. Yeah. Raiders, generally speaking, uh, and now they've lost their <laughs> insignificant. You need to keep them alive if you can. Um, uh, and equally, he gives the hidden traps uh, element. So uh, he's a really good attachment. Um, for, you know, but, uh, he's he's kind of this slightly distant, trappery, uh, trackery type dude. So he's in lots of kind of browns. Um, from that perspective but he's got that beautiful wide axe head that uh, just begged for some really nice smooth non-metallic metal uh, to, to, to kind of create that contrast and moves really nicely into that kind of fox fur that he's got uh, draped around his shoulders um craster Crast yeah dirty old dirty old man dirty isn't old he man. um <laughs> dirty dirty old man um yeah, Craster's Craster. Um, I mean, I guess the bit that stands out. But he's quite different because he's in a chair, um, unlike anything else. So trying to figure out how that might work was uh, blew my mind a little bit. But um, just really enjoyed working on that really, uh, <laughs> without being too rude, that really big weapon in his lap. Um, uh, <laughs> just, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's there... Um, it's a great opportunity to, to, to like I say, do that non-metallic metal work and um, really make him uh, look more dangerous, I guess, than he than he is usually. Um, the walrus, oh, the walrus is massive, isn't he? Um, it's a unit. He is a unit, <laughs> and sticking sticking him on a rock just makes it even 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 dirtier from that perspective i guess um but yeah his um that that gray to his outfit um actually has a subtle bit of green uh, woven into it which is what makes that gray a little bit more interesting than just a typical gray yeah. um and creates that uh variation to the bluey rock tone that's there as well so um so he stands out from that perspective but he's a beast he was my main commander uh, this year, so he had to, he had to, he had to have presence. He had to look cool. Um, and then, lastly, I guess Ab Abel the Bard, which is, um, I think, uh, probably one of the better um, skill level painted models within within the force. So he's got this really nice, vibrant uh, red cape and a nice bit of freehand uh, on the back of that, which is which which is quite nice. Trying to make that. Um, stand out a little bit and look look in keeping with with free folk. He's he's kind of deceptive model from that perspective, bringing in different tones, different colours. Um, the non metallic gold on his brooch on his uh, left breast, um, the 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 loot or lyre or whatever it's called, trying to get the strings to have that realistic. Um, Kind of color tone to them 
uh, whilst in miniature form. Yeah, I really liked him. Really enjoyed working on him. And he's got out of out of a lot of the free folk, he's got a really. Um, you get a lot of the character through the face on on Abel the Bard. Um, yeah. So working on his face was 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 uh, really nice. Um, really lent itself to those highlights and low lights uh, and making him quite this um, dark brooding uh, character that's kind of lost everything but but still still playing a song <laughs> still playing a song looks like looks like raining blood by Slayer and he, um, so with, with him obviously you mentioned there that he was he's one of the more I think you said more skilled paint jobs but for me it's a very much a, a a, a much brighter character because obviously you haven't got to worry about him too much sitting in your units. Was that a decision you made? Because obviously the attachment version of him, I, uh, we discussed this, I believe this is the NCU version of him that you played in the GT, but do you, was it a, a, was it a choice because you're going to put him in other units for the other side? So he, he looks a bit more like cohesive in their army or was it just you went to make a look um, like? Well, yeah, to, to, to a degree. Yes. So, um, Yes, in the in the most recent GT, I played him as the um, NCU Deceptive Bard version. But actually, this guy was painted for um, LGT 22, and uh, in that LGT, in that list, he was there as the um, enemy attachment um, first and foremost. So, yeah, I kind of um, given his backstory at this point, I knew he was kind of. Um, there but distant he was he was an opportunity to kind of um his his backstory as a bard is he's kind of this bright uh, colorful uh character so i i knew I, I had that delicate kind of um internal war in that he needed to fit in with the army as a general theme and as a general kind of uh, colorway but at the same time, he was an opportunity to bring in things that are nowhere else in the army. So I don't think um, any of them really have what I would call uh, a flowing cape. So the cape was immediately going to be something that needed to stand out, be different. It's got to still blend into the rest of the colours and, and that kind of muted package. But it was an opportunity to shine, to stand out, some some nice embroidered free freehand that you wouldn't get anywhere else. A gold brooch, I don't think, other than maybe um, one or two characters, sword hilts or, or styre, is there any sort of gold anywhere else in the rest of the army? So to bring those sort of um, elements of luxury uh were were really important and well i mean like i mentioned earlier um my son's uh army's lannisters so red cape stolen or uh whatever from a from a uh, lannister general or, or or hero or what have you um made an awful lot of sense uh plus red is red is uh, a color that draws uh draws the viewer's eyes so um Red was red was a no-brainer. Yeah, no, again, absolutely incredible, mate. You've done you've done an amazing job on these guys. Um, so that is the army done. We're gonna have a little look at your uh, activation banners now because you've spent quite a lot of time, or I don't quite a lot of time. But you've done an amazing job on these as well. So here we go. We you did bring more than this. We only filmed the. Uh, just a seven of them because um, they kept trying to get wiggle their way off of the, uh, <laughs> the magnets. Off the, well, the magnets kept trying to make them escape. So, yeah, it's, um, so it really could. I mean, I, I can only presume that you know the idea behind this is that it's different banners stitched together. But do you want to talk through this? I mean, I also just quickly, I love the the blood effects on the base as well because sometimes that does look tacky, but this looks really good. So, do you want to sort of take it for it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So. Um, yeah, like I kind of mentioned really back at the beginning, these these are what helped uh, send the whole army uh, colour-wise in in the direction they went. So in my mind, the banners I could I could paint the banners um, and kind of just see where they went to because they're just the banners. They're not strictly speaking a part of the unit themselves. So um, I, I think one of the very first banners I painted it had some 
brown it had some beige but i but i also brought in quite a strong uh yellow tone on one of them and i brought in quite a strong green tone on on the other i don't think we actually filmed that one but um uh, ironically yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but actually i mean that that you know that was one of the first ones these i, I did all of the banners were, were the first bits i did for the whole army because i started doing that when i was like this works i can you know the way the colors are um uh have that touch of vibrancy but but at, at, no not vibrancy they have that high saturation level but are still muted at the same time this is working these these colors even though they're um i mean you've got everything there haven't you you've got pinks you've got purples you've got yellows you've got reds you've got greens blues you've got every color going but you kind of look at that as a as a collective and they all work together and so when when i was sat there painting them in a fairly carefree manner I was like, okay, this is this is working. I could let's see what this looks like across a, a, a raider unit. Um, so that was the next thing that got done alongside um, the Savage Giant and Val were, were two of my very first proper models. Did that raider unit, and I was like, oh my god! As I got kind of the first rank done and uh, looking at them, not just as single models, I thought, oh my god, this is these different colours are working and working well together and that that in itself is the first time i'd ever done anything like that and um kind of then led me as, as i worked through them to ever more kind of outrageous colors really that you kind of think that's that's absolutely bonkers what are you playing at <laughs> but actually they all blend in together they all look like this uh individuals but cohesive rabble as a unit that um you know when you look at it uh as i'm sat here at the moment looking looking at the shelf of the army as it's done at the moment it's just you your eye can get drawn to different colors but looking at it as a whole it's 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 all those colors all come together the the basing as you mentioned i mean there's an old adage in in hobbying isn't there bases and faces you've you, bases really help with the theme having that uh, continuity across all of the units and um, attachments and everything it brings it all together uh, yeah. and makes it that kind of cohesive whole um, yeah. so yeah ironically we're looking at the banners last but actually they were one of the first things and really were actually the the models in inverted commas that led to dictating what the army was going to look like as a as a colorway and as a theme Oh yeah, well I mean, the army looks great. Um, so that's that's us covered with stuff down there. So once again, man, congratulations on winning the best paint at the LGT. It was um, uh, we've seen pictures of everything that was there. There was a lot of good competition, but mm -hmm, definitely, you guys really stand out, and it's and it's inspiring to see people like yourself painting these miniatures at such a high level. Chris F and M, um, Tim Whitney. Mm. Uh, Duncan Rhodes, obviously, when he, he every now and then when he turns up, <laughs> yeah, it's it's great to see these these miniatures painted such a high standard. Um, Thank you. So I guess really, mate, my my question is, where are we going next? Are you sticking, <laughs> sticking with the free folk? You gonna you gonna finally admit that there is only one true queen of <laughs> Westeros and go Targaryen? <laughs> Follow you down that dark path? No, I don't think so. Um... <laughs> more sand there. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, well yeah 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 a bit dry um yeah no I, I i absolutely love my free folk i've i've stuck with them for a long while but um recently uh had the opportunity to start to dip into another faction that's kind of pulled me quite hard hook line and sinker really um just because it is so different to the free folk so um i've been drawn into baratheons um I don't. I don't really have a preference, uh, Stannis or, or Renly at the moment. Um, Mel seems to do more damage to my own units than anyone else. Um, so, uh, the dice seem to universally. The Baratheon dice seem to universally eat me uh, with a passion. Although 
equally my uh, as, as as per our game the other night my my army choice maybe leaves uh, a little bit to be desired in the grand scheme of things um but i'll i'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll hide under the banner of friendly league um <laughs> before you call me out on that but um yeah so I've, I've i've started playing with those a bit and i'm really enjoying just doing uh, playing a different army in a very different play style and the 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 units the models are really different um such that i mean kind of like i said i'm running out of the crushed glass um i'm i i wouldn't uh i'm not the sort of person i i, I like to kind of complete things so i'm i'm highly unlikely to be honest to paint much more free folk stuff if i haven't got the the product to then kind of finish them off so the likelihood is once the once the shadow cat's done it's probably going to be starting work on the baratheons hopefully maybe to to bring them to lgt next year providing that all goes ahead fingers crossed yeah um uh, and have at least uh, one painted army hopefully um for, for lgt next year albeit um uh that we talked about at the beginning really um and, mu and much like you do with 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 your painting um theme is all important so uh again the the baratheons I, I want them to be a little bit different to what everybody else does with their baratheons um and and uh they've been out for a while now so quite a few people have come up with some quite different things so i'm a bit i'm a bit stuck at the moment as to quite what the theme and the style will be because ultimately I, I can't I can't paint until I've got that theme and that structure in my mind to then start to work on the the, the bases and how the units are going to rank up um I you know I love the models I think the models um we were talking last night weren't we about the sentinels there yeah. I, I, I can't get them to work but the models they're they're even though they've been out for a while they're so dynamic the thing that really sets barras apart from almost every other faction is the predominance of the hammers so yeah. whilst on one hand that's 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 going to be the same across on I, I i don't feel strongly about converting the hammers out um you know people i know some people don't like that uh, predominance of that weapon mm -hmm. but actually that's that's part of what gives them their their base theme and style so um yeah. yeah kind of kind of i'm really liking them at the moment um <clears throat> i'm liking trying to find their play style yeah. uh whilst getting beaten senseless um uh and and that's fine because whilst i do that i can i can try and think my way through what what will be the theme what what direction will i take yeah and i think that as we spoke about earlier in the video um when you ran free folk to the, the lgt last year you didn't run the off-the-shelf list and, I, and that's what i quite mm. like about the way that you play and the way that you sort of paint is that you you're experimenting all the time so you know you're gonna you'll you, you'll find your way with them you'll find your way um yeah. sort of sort of the the, the theme and I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll look as great as this we'll probably have you back on here in a couple of years time with, with a brafian breakdown of how you painted them um have you thought about snow-based brafians <laughs> yeah, but I've got no bloody crushed glass, have I? <laughs> or just drink more? <laughs> oh God, yeah, no, I've, I've, I, I don't know. I've got, I've got a couple of, um, got a couple of ideas in my mind that I'm, umming and ahhing over what, what could look quite cool, look quite um, different uh, to, to, to what I expect. I mean, I've seen. Um, and the stuff that you did for the Battle of Black Blackwater Bay, yeah. um, with the um, lighting effects. I think there's another guy on. Um, I can't remember. Uh, he's on one of the Facebook. Uh, often puts his pictures up on Facebook. I think on one of the groups. Who again? Uh, it's got that really strong uh, nighttime, but lit with um, flaming braziers and stuff. Is a a really strong. Uh, pulled off well is 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 absolutely amazing um uh and had been uh had been 
one of the themes that was in the back of my mind but having having you done such a bloody good job with the battle of blackwater bay and and this other dude whose name i apologize uh, escapes me at the moment his handle um a two brilliant examples that i then kind of think okay that's that's that, that i'm not going to pull off anything any better than than what these guys can do so let's let's find your own way oj let's find something something else that isn't immediately uh, out there uh, to do so yeah i've got a few ideas I, I just need to i need to think them through a bit further uh, as to then committing because the reality is once i start um and and go down that pathway then that is that is set because with the once the bases are sculpted and everything to then kind of tear that all apart is so much time and effort that once once i've decided and committed that's it that's that's the direction um so i've got to like the direction that that's going in because yeah. otherwise i'll 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 um i'm not the fastest painter in the world and i know if i'm not enjoying what i'm doing then uh then i won't do it mm. yeah. uh, so yeah <laughs> so, so keep your eye out in, in <laughs> four or five months there might be some barras going up on ebay if it's all gone very wrong <laughs> that's right you could, you could just spray them black dry brush and grey base of anything best nighttime breathings isn't it <laughs> <laughs> nice okay man well we're gonna wrap up there because we've been talking for quite a while about your awesome army so yeah, thanks for your time, man. Thanks for coming on, on the show and having a chat with us and, and uh, showing us your absolutely incredible eye and talking through stuff. I mean, I could quite happily sit here for another two hours with you and talk about <laughs> painting, but um, at some point I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you and me, you and me both. Those, those yeah. kids come up early, don't they? Um, but no, it was, it was uh, uh, no, really appreciate um, sitting down and chatting with you, Grant. And and like I say, it, it, I, I'm the last person to blow my own trumpet. It was it was such a privilege to. To be there at the LGT, to, to to play with the army, to go up against all those other guys with their painted armies. I mean, the first first battle was was these guys up against Tim Whitney's uh, Night's Watch. He'd used crushed glass on his bases as well. Wow. The spectacle of that battle was that's that's what I hobby and game for is is those sort of game. Much like uh, I can only apologise for the yellow barras that you got stuck with the other night but playing against your fully paint beautifully fully painted themed uh targs um uh, even though they were smashing me up and those dice of yours were as dirty as um <laughs> you know d d playing yeah. for that playing for that spectacle is is a, 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 at the end of the day whether i win or lose i've already won um because actually there's beautiful models on both sides of the pitch and we're playing a game we're playing with blooming plastic soldiers for goodness sake um that's that's i've won already as soon as i've turned up to the to the table and there's those two painted armies i've won already yeah. um so yeah no really really appreciate the chance to 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 talk about it and um share a little bit of of what i've done yeah cool yeah, it's been great, mate. And uh, hurry, up and hurry up and paint the Baratheons in. We'll get you back on to talk about uh, how to paint armour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was slightly nervous about that, but yeah, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> no, you, you got it, you got it. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone else for tuning in and uh, checking out this video with OJ. Uh, make sure you leave some comments in the section below. I'm sure OJ will be um, sort of uh, stalking the shadows, ready to answer any questions you've got for him. Um, if you like what we do, make sure you do like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, and again, leave comments in the section below. Let us know what you want us to look at next. Did you enjoy this video? Do you want us to do more videos like this? Um, we're always open to um, looking at new series. So, yeah, thanks for your time again, OJ. Um, you got anything you want to add? No, no, no. Just like I said, Grant, real privilege to, to be here. And, and um, equally, uh, if people want to ask me any questions, you know, just like I did at LGT, I'm more than happy to, to share away um, at the end of the day. I, I want to be playing uh, my opponent's beautifully painted army just as just as much as I want them to enjoy looking at mine. So um, yeah, get in contact. Like I said, if if anyone out there is getting hold of some crushed glass, absolutely hit me up. Uh, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> awesome. And uh, you add an extra couple of quid to that because uh, you, you sound quite desperate for it. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'll probably be a little bit of a mug, but as long as it's as long as it's not the uh, standard import charge, I'll uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, man, right. Well, you take care. Have a, have a great evening, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you soon. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, see you soon. Take care, mate. Bye. Cheers. Bye.